Hello, I'm Julia Hein, and I'm standing here in front of one of the few remaining dodo skulls in the world. The dodo has become the icon of island extinctions, which is the topic of my research. So today I would like to tell you about my research on island extinctions that I did together with Daniel Kisseling, Emile van Loon and Dennis Hansen. When humans first arrived on oceanic islands, they encountered species that they had never seen before. Imagine what it must have been like for the people of New Caledonia to live together with giant flightless birds that made huge mounds of sands as nests. They could be five meters high. And the people of uh, Vanuatu, they lived together with Myolania tortoises uh, that had huge spiny tails and horns and they were really big. And when the Dutch people arrived on Mauritius, they encountered dodos and other giant tortoises. Unfortunately, these encounters had one thing in common. They led to a lot of extinctions. For instance, hungry sailors brought along their ship rats and other invasive species, and they really liked to hunt. For example, uh, when the people on Vanuatu hunted a Myelania tortoise, they uh, were unable to carry the big carcass back to their camp, and instead they cut off the leg bones and took those with them. So later archaeologists found these huge piles of leg bones. So island extinctions are really interesting. Unfortunately, these extinctions in turn affected the plants with whom they had interactions. For instance, the birds, mammals and reptiles that eat fruit, they are able to disperse the seeds of plants to other areas further away from the mother plant, which is important. And uh, this is especially true for large species or those that are able to fly. In our study, we quantified insular fugivore extinctions. We made a database of 74 islands from within 20 archipelagos worldwide. And we uh, collected the uh, occurrences of frugivores, birds, mammals, and reptiles. But we also included the extinct species. Those are recently extinct species. So we compared the whole frugivore community before and after extinctions. And then we calculated the proportion of this that has gone extinct. So the proportional loss. On the 74 islands in our study, 33 islands had extinctions. Those extinctions have caused a proportional loss of 37% on average. 37% of the original frugivore community. For instance, on Hawaii, all of the native frugivores have gone extinct. And on Galapagos, some frugivores, such as this giant tortoise, still remain. So we found that proportional extinction of frugivore communities is related to island characteristics. Uh, this means that uh, smaller islands and islands that are further away from the mainland and also islands with higher maximum elevation have a higher proportional loss of frugivores. So we also wanted to know what makes species more vulnerable to go extinct. So we looked at the birds, mammals and reptiles in relation to their functional traits, body mass and ability to fly or not. We found that the species that are large are more likely to go extinct and this is especially true for flightless birds and mammals. For the 33 islands with extinctions, we compared the community before and after extinction in terms of body mass. And we saw that the mean body mass shifted towards smaller body masses uh, because of the loss of so many large species. And this has on average caused the mean body mass to be reduced by 37% of the original. And the maximum body mass has been reduced by 51%. We conclude that there are more extinctions of frugivores on islands that are small, elevated and isolated from the mainland. And large and flightless frugivores are more vulnerable to extinctions. And this has led to a community level reduction in mean body mass. With the loss of these large sea dispersers, we can expect consequences for plants, especially large seeded plants, because the large frugivores, they are the ones capable of swallowing and dispersing the largest seeds. And if they're gone, those plants might have uh, problems dispersing. Therefore, on islands, it is important that we do not only conserve individual species, but we conserve and restore the interactions between them. For more information, look at our paper in ecography and our database in Dryad. Thank you for listening.